Much like last year, 2021 for me is gonna be all about going back to the past and play more games for the Nintendo Wii U, the PS3, and even the Xbox 360 because with every generation that we leap towards to, we kind of forget about some of those incredible games worth playing because maybe we did not get a sequel to a specific game on the PS4 or the Xbox One and we kind of forget about that. So something that I'm gonna be doing on the channel this year is highlighting specific games on their own individual videos so that way we can all experience or we experience those games together. So hey everybody, Juan here. Welcome back to the channel. For this video, I'm gonna be highlighting a sequel to one of my favorite racing games on the PlayStation 3. Whether you're a racing fan or not, I think this game is without question very fascinating to look at considering after the one that we'll be talking about, which is MotorStorm Apocalypse, we never got another MotorStorm game. I love playing the first one, so I thought, hey, why not play the ones that came out after, because I never did. I only played this one time and time again, so if you like what I do, make sure to subscribe, give me that thumbs up, go down to the comment section, and hey, let everybody know which are some of the PS3 games with that question worth playing in 2021. I bought MotorStorm Apocalypse last year because after playing it for a bit on PlayStation Now, I realize this game has a lot of potential, but on PS Now, it runs at 720p, 30 frames per second, and because it's stream only, it does have that tiny delay that makes it very difficult to play a couple of racing games. And considering the fact that I loved the first game, I knew I had to give it a shot. Now my knowledge about MotorStorm sequels is fairly limited, to the point that I actually thought this was the second game. And I know, it would have taken me like what, 10 seconds to go on Google, search that, but hey, I got this one, and I'll possibly be talking about Pacific Rift on a future video. In a way, I'm kinda happy that happened because then I get the stark contrast between the very first MotorStorm game and the very last one because I refuse to acknowledge that RC game on PS3. I played that and that is just awful, so this, this is the last one. And I gotta say, this game right here is a prime example of what happens when you take a great formula, such as the very first MotorStorm game, but expand upon it. And not just that, but you actually take a shift in presentation because the first MotorStorm game had a licensed soundtrack, it felt like it was vibing more towards the days of MTV, the television style presentation, but here, because it's called Apocalypse, they actually blend elements from games like Twisted Metal and something that's a lot more action oriented in the racing style game. I think mechanically, the game is not that much different from the first one, but when it comes to the track selection, which I'll talk about in just a few seconds, that right there makes this game a whole lot better. What I've always appreciated from these games is the large selection of vehicles. And I'm not just talking about different types of cars, I'm saying that you can drive a truck, a motorcycle, and it's kind of funny to see all of that go out there because when you're riding the motorcycle, you can try to punch the other vehicles, and I gotta say, that's uh, pretty damn funny. But the thing is, it works, and I love this because I think in that PS3, Xbox 360 generation, with games like Forza and all that, racing games became obsessed with simulation. And I know there's other games like Split Second and Burnout Paradise, which do not follow that traditional format. But when I think about the PlayStation 3, I think about MotorStorm. It was one of the main games that Sony promoted when the console came out, and it would have been very easy to eventually say, well, the first one was maybe kind of arcade, you know, throwback to the 90s, but we're gonna change that up, and it would not be the first series not necessarily tied to racing where they take that route yet here they actually took it farther back and made it even more arcadey and that's awesome one of my favorite racing games of all time is sonic and all-stars racing transformed because your vehicle well it transforms but not just that it makes every lap in a track very unique because something always changes and the same thing happens with apocalypse But instead of focusing on your vehicle changing, what they do is the actual world evolves, or, well, I'm actually gonna take a step back and say the world gets destroyed because it is apocalypse, so bridges get destroyed, huge buildings tumbling down right in front of you, and it all looks glorious in high definition. And keep in mind that the footage that you're looking at right now is recorded 
on a PlayStation 3 Slim. So this is not upscale, this is the original resolution of the game. And I point this out because right now, there's a fairly active modding community for PlayStation 3 games on computer. And you can check out games like Heavenly Sword in glorious 4K. So just imagine a game like this with that full emulation capability being upscaled to 4K. Man, it has got to look awesome. But going back to the gameplay and the tracks, every time I went around with a brand new lap, I was always wondering just what were they gonna do? So it wasn't just about getting to first place and actually enjoying the racing, the overall atmosphere and experience was just as important as my placement in the race. And I'm really just saying that to make me feel good because yeah, I, I did not do great, but I had fun. Now, not everything is perfect and there's definitely one part of the game that I don't think holds up all that well and visually, it's very questionable. Amateurs. You okay, Shimi? Uh-uh. She needs space. Someone died, huh? One of the Brotherhood. What's your name? Uh, Mash. Now let's be clear, we're talking about a racing game, so really, I'm not focusing too much on the story mode, but it's there, and I think it's cool that far more than just a, a basic arcade experience, they're trying to give you a purpose as you win these races. But the style and animation of these cutscenes feels very low budget and is a sharp contrast to everything else about the game and it just doesn't blend together very well. As I kept playing the game, and I'm talking about it now in this video, it begs the question of what happened? I mean, think about it. The PlayStation 3 came out and MotorStorm looked visually stunning and it still looks great today. And I'm talking about the first one, not even this one. And then they took that formula and expanded upon it with Pacific Rift, they had this game, they had another game for the PSP, they had the RC game, so maybe, I don't know, that was the nail in the coffin. If I were to speculate about this, I would say that maybe games like Forza had gamers be a lot more interested in that simulation style experience because we're talking about this, but yeah, I mentioned split second and we didn't get a second split second. Well, that sounded weird. And uh, when talking about games like Burnout Paradise, one of my favorite games of all time, but we never got to, we got Need for Speed Most Wanted, which was fairly similar to Burnout Paradise, but it wasn't quite the same game. So I feel like racing games in, I don't know, the past five to 10 years have taken a dramatic shift. And as a result, gamers like myself, I find myself tuning away from them. Now that's not to say everything's lost. I have played The Crew and The Crew 2, and I think it has some things that I liked about these games, but the overall presentation of MotorStorm Apocalypse, I think it's a lot better because it's simple. It's easier to understand. In a game like The Crew, they, they love to showcase the graphical capabilities. Wow, look at this, we're going on the air and then things are shifting. Apocalypse is about the tracks, it's about the feel, it's about the movement, it's about being aggressive in the race and the overall process feels so satisfying. And that is why I wanted to talk about this game in its individual video because when we talk about PlayStation 3 exclusives, yeah, we have a lot of Ratchet and Clank games, Resistance, My Nation Racers, which that game right there, look, another racing game but that one has a bit of a more mario kart style but the servers have since then been shut down so the experience is not the same but i think motorstorm apocalypse is a showcase of a great exclusive ps3 game that honestly many people forgot about and this is not an expensive game so that was my look at motorstorm apocalypse for the ps3 without question one of my favorite games now for the console and it's very surprising because i played this one for years upon years, and I was always in love with it, but I don't know why. I, d I was just never interested in checking out the other ones, which may be another factor that maybe people just preferred other game series, other racing games, and it wasn't any knock against MotorStorm. It was just, well, here's one game that's pretty good, but hey, everybody has like their Gran Turismo or Forza, or I even mentioned other ones like Split Second, Blur. We could talk about that for a much longer period of time. So I would love all of you to go down to the comment section and let me know, what did you think about MotorStorm Apocalypse and which are some of the PS3 games that you think without question are worth playing in 2021? Some of my upcoming videos on the channel are gonna be highlighting a couple of the games from my backlog, specifically PS3 and Wii U games that I'm looking forward to playing this year. And as a matter of fact, if you enjoyed this gameplay, you can head on over to my Let's Play channel, and I have a pretty nice lengthy video, unedited, uh, just me playing MotorStorm Apocalypse and providing commentary, so make sure to subscribe over there, as well as follow me at twitch.tv slash MrPlayerJuan. Subscribe here, and up until next time, thank you for watching and supporting, and take care, everybody.